uh, let's talk about what's playing out on the geopolitical front. President Biden announced tough new sanctions on Russia yesterday, blocking off four additional banks, including VTB, Russia's second largest financial institution. The White House also implemented a ban on selling U.S. semiconductors to Russia. This was accompanied by a slew of additional restrictions that were placed on Russia alongside European allies. And as we noted at the top of the show, the EU now uh, looking into freezing the assets of Putin and Foreign Minister Lavrov. Let's bring in Maximilian Hess, Foreign Policy Research Institute Fellow. It's good to talk to you today. Give me your assessment of where things stand right now, the sanctions on the one hand and the military action on the other. Thank you so much for having me. On the military action, there are Russian troops already in Kiev. That has been confirmed. Uh, it's unclear if they're diversionary groups or uh, an actual front, but the Ukrainians have managed to hold on for quite a bit longer and inflict a lot more pain on Russia than many initially thought. However, a large amount of Russia's firepower, including its heavy technical units, remain in reserve. So that situation very much could escalate. As for Russia's offer to have talks, it quietly swallowed up Belarus. Minsk is no longer a neutral territory, and its demands are, are frankly uh, egregious and not survivable for any Ukrainian government. So, so far, I don't think we're there. On the sanctions front, this is really the first major salvo in Biden's threatened package. He had made it quite clear what sanctions would come against Russia if it took this action, and has been fairly effective at coordinating with the European Union, although now that it's actually happening. There's been some pushback from uh, Europe on some of the key measures. What I would note is there are key carve-outs in these sanctions, licenses from the U.S. Treasury Department for dealings in agriculture and uh, energy commodities. So those leave a quite gaping loophole that will mean these don't really have the full impact they have now. But the Biden administration has been signaling that it will close those and tighten sanctions even further if the conflict continues. I think the markets are really in a lull right now, and this could still become a major economic yeah. war with huge impacts. Specifically on the sanctions on the big banks over in Russia, the president yesterday was pressed on why, in fact, the U.S. wasn't taking that extra step in cutting Russia off of the SWIFT payment system. He replied saying, number one, Europe isn't unified in it. But number two, the sanctions we put in place now are going to be much more effective. Do you agree? So if one takes away those treasury licenses, then yes, because the key business these banks do, they no longer really borrow as much financing from Western capital markets as a result of the 2014 sanctions. But their role in the plumbing of Russian oil, gas, commodities trading uh, and its government debt payments, those are really critical. The licenses largely allow those to go through. If those licenses are withdrawn or circumscribed, then yes, effectively these sanctions, in particular the targeting of another Russian bank, VEB, uh, but VTB as well, those will effectively have the same uh, impact. And the, um, so we could get there, but it's not there yet. Uh, Max, it's Brian Chung here. We've been hearing some kind of commentary about China wanting to get involved here and possibly wanting to talk with Russia about a possible resolution before things escalate further. How important do you think Xi Jinping is to uh, what we're seeing develop there? China is hugely important for Russia's attempts to move away from the dollar system, which have been largely ineffective, uh, only settling rather than actually contracting things in alternative currencies. China is the only one who can really give them that alternative with the cancellation of Nord Stream 2 and the upcoming uh, Power of Siberia 2 pipeline uh, uh, being discussed. Those are really where Russia's alternatives are in the future. And China has a lot more political weight. I would say it's been interesting comments so far from Xi and the Chinese foreign ministry. Uh, I, I wouldn't try to speculate myself as to exactly what they're thinking, but they seem to be reaching a, a, a position that says, we'll go along with you, Russia, for now, but this can't continue and go further. China is Russia's partner, but it's not an ally, and we often forget that. The big question here is still, what is the end game for President Putin? It sounds like you're a little skeptical about these uh, Russian state media reports about President Putin willing to have talks with Ukraine. But you did make that comparison to what has played out in Belarus, which is essentially a pro-Russian government. Is that what President Putin is speak seeking at this point, essentially removing Vladimir Zelensky and putting in a government that is willing to go toe the line for Russia? 
for Russia even more than having a pro-Russian government, while that would be nice, it might not be sustainable. Ukrainians have had years of a Western agenda, and many Ukrainians are dedicated to that. We've seen how many have taken up arms. Uh, Zelensky has offered up the arsenal to Ukrainians willing to volunteer to fight for their country, and there's a real risk of a counterinsurgency in, if that kind of situation happens. The sad reality of it is what Putin wants probably even more than that is for Ukraine to be a failed state so that for anybody domestically within Russia, a pro-Western democratic agenda seems something that brings uh, disaster and destruction and is there longer and is therefore no, not so attractive. And finally, it, it does feel like the White House is, is really trying to find this balance in imposing sanctions, on the one hand, inflicting pain economically on Russia, but also being mindful of the economic impact that's likely to have on European allies. Does that limit the extent to which the White House is willing to go? And, and is that sort of why we're seeing President Putin move in this way, his understanding that the U.S. will only go so far? You know, I think Putin is willing to accept even far more drastic sanctions than we have now. He essentially has realized that there is no more future for him with the West. That's as a result of his own actions, not necessarily the West's. Uh, but we saw this in, there was his a very well-publicized uh, press conference a few days ago where he brought together a bunch of government officials, but he also brought together Russia's oligarchs yesterday and sat them all down for a lecture, essentially said, I don't care what happens to your businesses. If you do anything uh, to step out of line, consider the rest of those businesses that aren't already mine, mine. Uh, so, you know, I, I think in some ways he really is choosing to draw a new iron curtain around Russia and as much of Ukraine as, as he can grab hold of. Maximilian Hess, Foreign Policy Research Institute Fellow. It is good to have you on on this Friday. Appreciate the time.